Flight 12 will mark the first mission of 2026, and it will also introduce the newest version of Starship. Although many have stated that this mission will follow the same procedures used during the version 2 flights, the reality is quite different. Significant upgrades and structural changes will make this flight far more challenging than it may appear. These changes raise important questions. How difficult will Flight 12 truly be? And can SpaceX navigate the technical hurdles that lie ahead? We'll explore the answers in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Again, it's widely understood that the procedures for Flight 12 will remain unchanged. On the surface, that sounds simple. However, the mission will be far more difficult than it appears, because the real challenge comes from entirely new factors introduced with this version of the vehicle. Even before Starship takes to the sky, we can already see the complexity ahead. The issues with B-18 have provided a clear warning. During a stress test conducted before the cryogenic loading test, B-18 failed violently. The liquid oxygen section was torn apart and the methane tank was significantly distorted. This incident highlighted an important truth. The structural stability of Starship V3 will be a major obstacle for SpaceX, especially on its debut flight. Once the vehicle transitions from ground testing to a full mission profile, everything becomes more demanding. Cryogenic propellant will be loaded into the tanks. The engines will run at full power. Every system will experience extreme conditions for, for an extended period. The margin for error narrows dramatically once the countdown begins. The most difficult aspect, the most difficult difficult aspect is that this is the first flight. SpaceX has no prior real-world experience with many of the V3 upgrades. There are no previous flights to help reveal hidden issues or guide refinements. New fuel tank configurations, redesigned fuel routing, or structural reinforcements all remain unproven in actual launch conditions. This lack of flight heritage creates uncertainty throughout the vehicle's operation. Because of this, SpaceX has only one reliable method to reduce risk. The company must inspect, test, and verify every component through cryogenic tests, static fires, and countless ground checks. Both stages require the same level of scrutiny, since any failure at any phase of the mission could jeopardize the entire flight. S-39 is expected to roll out in the coming days, now that stacking is complete. B-19 will likely remain at the production site until early next year. Both vehicles will undergo extensive checks informed by the lessons learned from B-18's failure. These insights will be essential to ensure structural margin and operational readiness before the official flight. Beyond the issues that have already appeared in testing, there are also challenges tied to the new features and upgrades. A major example is the engine. Beginning with Flight 12, SpaceX will employ the Raptor 3 engine. This engine has been in development for some time and it includes several major improvements. It provides significantly higher thrust, reaching approximately 280 tons at sea level and around 306 tons in vacuum. Its design is more efficient, made possible by removing, by removing or integrating many smaller and more delicate components. These improvements are intended to raise performance, reduce risk, shorten production time, lower costs, and streamline refurbishment. Yet, despite these advantages, Raptor 3 introduces several new difficulties that SpaceX must navigate. The first major challenge is the increased thrust. More power means that controlling the vehicle becomes more complex. The timing of various flight events changes. Propellant consumption changes. The forces exerted on the structure increases. And SpaceX must balance these factors carefully, especially during ground tests, such as the static fire campaign. These tests will be key to validating engine performance under controlled conditions. Higher thrust also increases the risk to ground systems and the vehicle itself. While the launch infrastructure has already received upgrades, including a new flame trench and reinforced structures, the first use of a new engine version always carries uncertainty. Miscalculations or unforeseen interactions could still cause damage. SpaceX will need to inspect these systems thoroughly during testing to ensure readiness for the flight. Another challenge comes from the engine's simplified design. While simplification improves long-term reliability, it also creates difficulties during inspection. Welded structures replace the previous flanges and bolts. This means that if engineers suspect an internal issue, they can no longer simply detach sections for examination. Instead, they must cut into the engine. In practical terms, if an engine requires cutting, it's almost certain that it will not 
not be used on a flight vehicle. This increases the importance of catching problems early and understanding how new internal geometry behaves in different operating regimes. The redesigned fuel injection and combustion processes introduce further complexity. Although they promise higher efficiency, SpaceX must still verify that these new cycles operate safely and predictably under flight conditions. As with any major propulsion change, there's no substitute for real-world experience. Overall, the engines which truly represent the core of the rocket will be one of the most significant challenges in the first operational campaign of Starship V3. Now we can separate the discussion into the two stages. The Super Heavy booster carries several notable upgrades. One of the most prominent is the revised hot staging system. The new design takes inspiration from the hot staging approach used on the Soviet N-1 rocket. However, SpaceX has introduced meaningful modifications. The new hardware is mounted directly onto the booster instead of being installed as a separate ring. It's lighter, simpler, and does not require jettison during flight. Its extended structure allows for improved heat dissipation and smoother venting of pressure from the upper stage engines during separation. This redesign reduces mass, simplifies manufacturing, and improves reliability. However, it also introduces its own set of risks, since no version of the system has yet been tested in flight. The structural loads during separation, the thermal environment, and the aerodynamic forces acting on this new configuration remain unproven. Flight 12 will be the first opportunity to validate whether this redesigned interface functions as intended. All of these factors combine to create a mission that appears simple on paper, yet presents some of the most difficult challenges SpaceX has ever faced for Starship. The new hot staging hardware introduces meaningful capability, but that capability also creates its challenges that SpaceX must address. The larger venting area allows exhaust energy to escape more forcefully toward the lower portion of the booster, including the grid fins. Even though the grid fins have been positioned lower than in the previous design, they will still be exposed to greater heating and pressure loads. Any unexpected stress on the grid fins can influence navigation, stability, and the booster's ability to decelerate in a controlled and predictable manner. Another difficulty introduced by the revised hot staging system is its impact on the booster's ability to perform an active flip. In the earlier design, SpaceX placed the hot staging vent to one side. This allowed them to use the upper stage engine thrust to push the booster in a specific direction during separation, thereby conserving propellant and improving efficiency. In the new configuration, that directional benefit becomes far more difficult to achieve. SpaceX may have to rely more heavily on ship's gimbling engines during the separation sequence, which adds additional complexity during a critical moment of the flight. Looking farther down the booster, the grid fins themselves have undergone significant redesign. In V3, both the size and number of grid fins have been reduced. A change in size naturally results in a change in mass, which affects the aerodynamic behavior of the booster, including its navigation during descent and its ability to shed velocity efficiently. The reduction from four grid fins to three introduces a new asymmetry, leaving one side of the booster without a fin. Although space SpaceX has stated that navigation accuracy will not be compromised, the possibility of imbalance remains a real concern, especially during early test flights when unpredictability is at its highest. Even though B-19 will still perform a water landing instead of attempting a catch, it must still achieve precise control throughout its descent. The V-3 booster will eventually need to land directly into the Mechazilla arms, just as previous booster versions are expected to do. Achieving this precision begins now, during these early flights. Every change to the grid fin system, from mass distribution to aerodynamic authority, must be validated under real-world conditions. It's also important to remember that the new grid fins have an integrated catching point. This means that the structural elements responsible for supporting the final catch are now part of the fin assembly itself. This integration increases efficiency, but it also requires greater protection and durability, since even minor damage could compromise the booster's ability to be safely caught in future missions. The next flight will serve as the first true test of the durability of this integrated design. Now, we can shift to the upper stage where the upgrades are less visible but more intricate. The most critical system on ship is the heat shield. Recent images of S-39 show a fully tiled intact shield that appears structurally 
structurally consistent. It seems that the V3 design will not continue the experimental metallic tiles seen on earlier test articles, nor will SpaceX intentionally remove tiles for stress testing purposes. Instead, the shield will be configured exactly as required for operational flights. Some other refinements include the use of a crunch wrap technique to fill gaps between sections of the vehicle, along with possible improvements in tile composition to increase durability. However, these updates remain expectations until proven in flight. The heat shield will face its first true test during re-entry, where temperatures and pressures will reach extreme levels. While engines, tanks, and structures can undergo repeated ground tests, the heat shield has no substitute for real atmospheric re-entry. It must protect the vehicle throughout the heating phase, ensuring that ship reaches a stable flight state for its landing burn. The success of this landing will lay the foundation for future attempts to catch ship during the Mechazilla arms. Not only must the vehicle survive re-entry, but the heat shield itself must remain largely intact. This is essential for future rapid reuse. A shield that requires extensive rework after every flight would hinder turnaround time and reduce operational efficiency. The first V3 flight will therefore be the hardest test the heat shield has ever faced. Beyond the tiles, other sensitive systems on ship will introduce their own challenges. A prime example is the aft flap. These large aerodynamic surfaces, these large aerodynamic surfaces endure intense heating during re-entry because of their broad surface area and exposed positioning. Protecting them has always been difficult, but V3 raises the stakes even further. Damage that might have been tolerable during earlier test flights is now far less acceptable. The first operational V3 mission must prove that the flaps can withstand the full, full thermal and aerodynamic environments without significant degradation. Lastly, the ground infrastructure also plays a critical role in the success of this debut flight. The launch site has undergone extensive modifications. The new orbital launch mount paired with the upgraded flame trench was designed designed to reduce the mechanical and thermal impact on the vehicle and the pad. These changes aim to provide long-term reliability and allow the system to support repeated Starship launches without sustaining major damage. However, this will be the first time this configuration supports a launch and it must handle the most powerful launch vehicle in the world. Any failure or miscalculation could damage the pad, delay future missions, or affect vehicle safety. Just like the vehicle itself, the ground system must be validated through static fire testing and refined as necessary. All of these factors illustrate that while the V3 upgrades promise higher performance and greater efficiency, they also introduce substantial challenges. Flight 12 will be the moment where every new feature, every redesigned system, and every structural improvement is tested under real conditions. It'll be one of the most demanding milestones in Starship's development. In any case, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones stones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.